Today we're gonna to be looking at how to make this animated hologram effect. This new update focuses on stylized materials. The pack is now on sale to celebrate this new update and will continue through the Blender Market Sale for 25% off. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. So first off, we're gonna be looking at how to make this animated holographic shader. Now you can follow along with whatever model you want. I went ahead to cgtrader.com and downloaded some assets to work with. So I'm gonna be working with this spaceship. So go ahead and we'll grab your model and add a basic material to it. I've called mine hologram. And then over here, we'll have a principal BSDF and that's what we're going to get started with. So first of all, let's go ahead and change our emission color. So let me switch over to the render view here. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the base color and the emission color. I'm gonna do kind of this standard kind of blue holographic look. I'm gonna go ahead, press Control C over that. And then come down here to the emission and I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. And then I'm gonna turn my emission strength up to something like 25 or so. And that's just so that when I go ahead and put this in my scene, it will add more lighting effects that I kind of have a basic little environment set up here. And you can see how that's kind of helping light that scene up. I'll talk more about how to make that environment at the end of this video. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and use a wave shader. So let's go ahead add a wave texture. Great, and we're gonna kind of go ahead and change some settings here. And one quick way you can preview this on your model is that under the free add-ons included in Blender, if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can hold Control, Shift, Click, and that will allow us to see how it's affecting our model. So I'm gonna leave this at bands, X, and sign. Those settings are fine. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to something like 15 just to get us kind of more lines going there. And then I wanna give this kind of a, a, kind of like a diluted, maybe distorted holographic effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump up this distortion and you'll see how that twist and turns those. I'm gonna set mine to something around 7.5. So it's a little bit consistent, but also a little bit of kind of detail in there. And then I'm gonna leave most of these settings to the same. And then what we can do is we can actually take this phase offset here. And you can see that how if we do that, it will offset the phase, which kind of creates this animated effect. And this is one way we're going to go about animating our effects. So I'm gonna go ahead, click in here. We're gonna talk hashtag frame and what that will do is tie this number to the frame playback and then we can divide that number or multiply that number to speed it up so if i go divide by two it'll play back back at half speed so i'm going to go ahead and play and see what this is looking like and you can see here that we're starting to get this kind of warping effect over there i've also gone ahead and added a kind of basic hover animation to that if you're wondering why that's moving as well Great. Now let's go ahead and refine the look of this wave texture a bit. So I'll go ahead, click Control Shift T there, and we're going to plug this into the base color for now, just so that we can easily kind of see that on our effect. I'm going to go ahead and turn the emission strength down to one so I can kind of see what I'm doing better. I'll crank that back up later. So what I'll do here is I'm going to grab this and with Node Wrangler enabled, I can hit Control T and that will give me these kind of mapping nodes here. And I can kind of see where those bands are appearing. Now, right now with the wave texture, these are kind of soft when generally when you look in sci-fi films and things, these lines tend to be a bit harsher. So we're going to search for a color ramp here. I'm going to drag that right over. We're going to change this to constant. What that's going to do is get rid of that in between gradation. And then we can kind of move this out until we get something we're happy with. So if I kind of go and drag mine about there, you can see that we're getting kind of a lot harsher lines and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that, move that back uh, across. So great, here's what I'm going to do next. We're gonna go ahead and add a layer weight node. And then what we'll do is hit Control Shift T there, and that's gonna push the Fresnel in there, but I actually want it to go to facing, so we'll do that so we can view it. And what the facing does, as you can see, is based on whatever angle you are facing it, and this will work with the camera too, you can see how it is kind of changing the gradation across the object. And if we go ahead and adjust this number here, we can get some different effects. So if I go ahead and bring that down, you can see that more of it's getting black, which is kind of what I want because I want some of this holographic look to kind of be a little bit more transparent. I'm actually going to set this to a really low number, like 0 0.05. And you can see how that's kind of really kind of darkening a lot of it. And that's so that when we plug this into our alpha, this stuff will become more transparent. So I'm going to go ahead reset that to view on the BSDF node. I'm gonna grab this layer weight 
And then we're gonna also plug this into a color ramp. So we'll go ahead, bring this facing into here so we can get a better view of it. Go to our color ramp here, grab this here. And then I'm going to set this one to ease, which will change how it gradiates. You see how there's that um, change there. I'm gonna bump this up a tiny bit and really just kind of crank this down. And then if I plug this into the alpha, you can see what it's doing a bit better. And you can see that how now that by kind of crushing that, we are getting a little bit more of a see-through effect than if we bring this back and up, you can see how that's changing. So feel free to adjust that until you get a kind of level of visibility that you are happy with. Great. Now we'll be mixing this with this texture down here in a moment, but let's go ahead and continue to build up our effect. So next, let's go ahead and add a noise texture. This one's pretty straightforward. I'm sure everybody's familiar with this. We'll go ahead and click that. And what we're going to do is we're going to bump up the scale to something like 150 there so that we can get some kind of general noise across there. And we'll play the detail a bit. I'm going to go ahead and add 15, and that'll just give us a tiny bit more detail variation in between the larger noise kind of crumbs. I'll leave this roughness down to zero. And great. Now let's go ahead and add a color ramp here, which will give us more control over this. And again, I think that this kind of soft look doesn't necessarily feel very uh, sci-fi or digital, uh, where digital compression and things tends to be a lot more kind of glitchy and blocky. So we're gonna go ahead, grab this color ramp, add a constant, and then move this down so that we're getting kind of a harsh edge there that might help give it a bit more of a digital look. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna add one more element. So this one is also going to be another animated element. So what we're going to do is add a gradient texture and we're going to leave that on linear. And then we're going to control shift click that so we can view that and you can see how we're getting that gradient texture across our object here. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab this, hit control T. I'm gonna leave that on the generated texture coordinates. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of rotate this gradient because I actually want this gradient to go from top to bottom. Now, depending on the object you have and you're seeing and how it's generating the coordinates, your rotation values may be different, but most likely what you will be able to do is rotate the Y in a 90 degree increment. And then what I can do now is go ahead and add a color ramp here. And then if I begin pushing this gradient, you can see how that's moving across the model this way, which is what I want to kind of get the effect I'm going for. As I said, you can keep playing with this uh, Y value and X value um, in 90 degree increments until you get kind of the angle you're happy with. But what we're going to do is we're gonna create kind of like a scan line, almost like there's a bit of a flicker going across the bulbs projecting the hologram. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll drag this forward here and drag this here. Go ahead, we'll add another node. We'll grab that node and we'll make that node black. Perfect. Now what we can do is we can animate the location. And when we animate that location, which depending on what direction you lo rotated it, but mine's moving in the X direction of the generated coordinates, we can then kind of create this beam that can kind of just sheen across. Great. So we're gonna set this to negative one. We're going to right click, insert single keyframe. And then we're going to move ahead on this item here and kind of create an animation. So let's say that I wanna go ahead and do mine every 60 frames. So we'll go ahead, animate this up to one, right click, insert single keyframe. And then we will see that it is kind of scanning across our object. Perfect. And what we can do to make that loop, is we'll tag up here. We'll go ahead, grab this graph editor here, here on our object. Click mapping node first. And then what we'll see is this shader node down here. I'm gonna go ahead, hide all my object transforms. Press A to select this shader tree X default value here. And then if you hit shift E, you can click make cyclic. And what that will do is now if I hit play, that will continually repeat that animation on a cycle. And then as long as our animation ends on a 60 frame cycle, that will be a perfect loop. So all of these are just kind of black and white values. So we're gonna go ahead with some mix shader nodes and just add those together. So first what we'll do is we'll add here, search. We're going to look for mix RGB. Great. Now we're end up going to end up using three of these. So let's just go ahead and duplicate these ahead of time. Perfect. Move that over there. 
And then what we're going to do is we'll grab this wave texture here. We're going to take the color node here. We're going to plug this into color one. We're going to take the layer weight here and plug this into color two. We're going to set this factor to one, which means that whatever effect we have chosen up here will be applied 100% to this layer here. And we're going to change this to multiply. And then if I hit control shift and click that, you can kind of see what that's looking like. It's adding that layer weight on top of the kind of scan lines that we have going, which is what we want to go for. Now what we can do is we can take this, plug this into color one, and then what we wanna do is take this noise texture and add that on top of everything as well. So go ahead, hit Control Shift T so you can see what's happening here. Go ahead, crank this up to one. So right now, all we see is our noise texture, but we'll change this to multiply, which is just going to apply the black portions to the layer beneath it. And you can see how that's kind of mixing in to our wave texture as well. Perfect. Now what we can do is go ahead, grab this last one. And this one, we have this beam that we want to be kind of shining across everything. So we're actually gonna plug this one down here into color two, plug this one into color one, go ahead, control shift, click this so we can see it up this factor. Let's get somewhere where we can see it, great. So there you can see how it's taking over completely. But if we go ahead and do add, what it's going to do is take the whites and do an additive blend beneath it, meaning it's gonna kind of give us this bright glowy look as it goes across our shader. Perfect. Now we are ready to go ahead and plug this into our shader here. Let's go ahead, control shift, click that, get that in there. And what we can do is we'll play some of these other things. We'll take the specular, we're gonna bump that up, give us a bit more shininess, but turn off the roughness there. And that'll just affect how it works very subtly. And then what we can do is take this color and plug this into the alpha. And you can see now how these lines and noise textures are playing into that and then the layer weight. And as I said, you can adjust any of those elements individually. And then as we move forward, you can see how we're getting that sheen across there. And then because we have this phase offset being animated as well, it's very subtle, but you can see that these lines as well, let me get an angle where you can see, are kind of moving across, giving us kind of an animated hologram effect. Perfect, so that's the holographic shader. And next let's look at how I kind of did the particle system and the lights around it. So first up, I'm just gonna go ahead, turn on my environment here. Now these parts right here were just downloaded off the internet for free. I just got uh, these on CG Trader. I just was trying to grab as many free assets as I could in case you wanted to follow along exactly, but I just searched kind of sci-fi elements and pulled in a couple random panels and then just threw some metal shaders on it. This is just a cylinder and a plane and the cylinder just has a couple of bevels. And then I just kind of put some uh, metal materials on there just to give it a bit of a sci-fi look. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to do these particles and then also had to add this atmospheric effect here. Now for these kind of like beams of light creating this atmospheric look around here, this is actually a very simple light ray shader. And I just have that applied to a cylinder here, but you'll notice that it's rendering very quickly and that's because it's not actually affecting the lighting. It's a very kind of just simple setup. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that setup looks like. Now, I can't take credit for coming up with um, this shader setup. This was actually from the official Blender vlog. And unfortunately, it was just a small tip they just kind of showed in the middle of one of the vlogs and I kind of memorized it and have been using it ever since, but I can't locate which vlog it was part of. But thank you to the Blender Foundation for this technique. I'm just gonna go ahead and open my screen here so that you can copy that shader setup if you want. You can see it's pretty simple. The texture coordinate going into noise texture, color amps, multiply, emission, and then putting out into the group, which is then kind of plugged into the volume. So yeah, that's how you go about creating that simple light ray effect. And then I just applied it to a cylinder in my case, cause that kind of fit around the tube of my object. This here and focus on this, we'll focus in on the particle system. So you can come here and add a new particle system. And what I did is I went in here and I selected a group of vertices, created a new group, assign those vertices there. And then if you come down here into your particle settings, you can come to the vertex groups down here and set that to your density group. That way it was only going there. And you'll notice that my particles, if I play back this animation, are slowly kind of floating up. So the way to do that is you go about select how many particles you want. And I just left all the other settings to the default settings. 
and then came down here to the render settings, changed it to render as object, chose my particle, which was the icosphere, changed the scale randomness up to one. And then you come over here to your gravity tab. And then I set my to which is normally negative nine meters per second, which is kind of what reflects gravity in real life. And I just changed this to point one so that it would go upwards instead. And then you can see here that now we have particles that combine with the atmospheric effects and the animated shader gives you this final scene here. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.